Hey guys, what's going on? Um, just back here to uh, do another one of these collection videos. Um, the purpose of these collection videos are just kind of to show you stuff that um, uh, I missed out on showing in some of my older videos when I was first showing all my stuff um, because I was moving and I didn't have everything. So now that I've got mostly every, all my stuff, I'm going to start showing everything, catching up. So um, these are just things that, in my opinion, any collector should have, you know, in their collection. So anyway, get this started. First off is um, Bob Dylan, of course, Highway 61 Revisited. Classic album. Um, one of his best, that's for sure. Uh, really good shit. I mean, this was a um, pretty controversial album because, like, this and bringing it all back home because a lot of his fans, you know, I'm not telling anyone who likes Bob Dylan anything new, but for those of y'all that don't know, a lot of his fans back then were purists and uh, didn't want him changing his music and they liked a lot of the stuff that he was doing beforehand more, the acoustic stuff, and they didn't want to see him change his his style up. But, you know, he was like not having that. He was like, you know, I'm, I always want to progress as an artist, so I'm going to do new things. So that's what he did. And people didn't like it at first, but, you know, people it grew on people. And this is obviously now one of the best albums ever, so, yeah, people don't realize what, what's going on until later, but anyway, Bob Johnson produced this, um, good shit, and, uh, Tom Will, he didn't start working with Tom Wilson until, um, after this, so, but anyway, yeah, classic, not telling y'all anything new, um, so here is Bringing It All Back Home, great, great, great album, another, one along the same time when uh, he was starting to play more electric music. And uh, this this one actually has, you know, a lot of acoustic tracks too, but uh, he just was experimenting and he wanted to start doing something new. So, you know, I applaud the man for doing it and not not just trying to keep other people happy, you know. So, but yeah, this is a great one. This, of course, has, you know, Maggie's Farm, uh, Subterranean Homesick Blues, you know, all those classics um tambourine man of course one of my favorites is bob dylan's 115th dream which i'm guessing he wrote i mean it might be from a real dream of his or a, or a series of dreams of his and i always thought that was a great idea for uh writing a song would be uh going to sleep you know dreaming and then the minute you wake up writing down what happened in your dreams and um i always thought that that was genius and you know, maybe getting like a, a good list of dreams written down and then pick and choose things from uh, the best ones and then write a song about it. I always thought that was a cool idea. I don't know if that's what he did or not, but if, if so, that's genius, I think. So anyway, yeah, I'm bringing it all back home. Classic. All right, up next here is, man, a hefty album. And that is Songs in the Key of Life by Stevie Wonder. Um, it's a reissue. It's a collector's album edition here. It's hard to read there, but it's got this perma sticker here. If you can see it. Anyway, great album. It's a double album, so it's four sides. A lot of music. A lot of music. But uh, definitely a classic. It's actually a really uh, experimental record because in the terms of like they were doing a lot of stuff on this album I watched, I've seen the classic album special about the making of this album and I didn't realize it at first but they, they were doing a lot of stuff that uh, hadn't been done at all, ever so it's pretty cool and uh, the sound quality of this is incredible that's another thing, yeah look at all the songs it's a long album, there's a lot of music on here but yeah, um, there's like I said, there's a lot of stuff that they were doing on here that had never been done uh, before. So that's pretty cool. I mean, you always like to see artists experimenting and try to trying to break new ground. So that's kind of what they were doing for this album, and it's classic Stevie Wonder. You know, he's a genius. All right, a uh, couple of Doors records here. 
Waiting for the Sun, which is their third full-length album. And um, it's great. I mean, it's not my favorite. It's, it's actually one of my least favorites. I mean, because the thing about them is they're so good, and most of their output's incredible. And uh, this is great, too. It's just I don't think it gets up there with, like, Strange Days and L.A. Woman and their first album and stuff like that. Like, this and uh, the Soft Parade just don't quite reach that pinnacle of greatness to me. But anyway, it's still great, so can't go wrong with the doors. This is the celebration of the lizard. And there's Jim Morris in there, the Lizard King. So anyway, it's a reissue um, on Electra. Yeah, it's a good album. Now here is a fantastic album. That, of course, is L.A. Woman by The Doors. You all know it, I'm sure. Man, like, what a good, 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 good album. Uh, last album that they ever released, because right after recording this, Jim, of course, moved to Paris and mysteriously passed away so very sad story but at least he went out with a bang with this one I'm glad that he didn't end with Soft Parade or you know one of the other albums that I don't know I mean I think Morrison Hotel is incredible so yeah it's just kind of there in the midsection they weren't doing stuff that I was as much into but um man if every album of theirs was like this all, every single song of theirs would be great, I'm sure, because this is great all the way through. I love the cover, too. It's really cool how we're red background, the yellow picture. Anyway, classic Jim Morrison stuff. All right, here's one. <laughs> I actually just found, actually, here's two that I found at FRS Books, and I was just kind of in a buying mood, so I, because these aren't two artists that I'm particularly into that much, but I do like both of these releases, and they have some good tracks on them, so... And they were cheap, so that's what matters. All right, the first one being Shotgun Willie by Willie Nelson. Uh, I love the song Shotgun Willie. It's great. And then Whiskey River's really good. Um, Bubbles in My Beer. Yeah, this, I mean, it's a good album. It does have some good tracks. But there's a lot of his stuff that I really don't care for at all. Um, so, anyway, yeah, Shotgun Willie. I think I got that for like four bucks or something. All right, and the other one that I found there was "Fly Like an Eagle" by or an Eagle, sorry, by Steve Miller Band. And this actually has "Rockin' Me" and "Take the Money and Run," which I think are his two best songs. That and "Jungle Love" and "Big Old Jet Airliner." Those are probably his four best songs, if you ask me. Um, you know, I grew up on this classic rock type stuff. Uh, my dad was always into this, and among other things, but he, he used to play this and. Stuff like Boston and Thin Lizzy and stuff like that. So I have that in my background as well. So, you know, it's not all... The, the only reason I'd listen to this isn't because it's great. I mean, it's good, but it's not... I don't think it's great, necessarily, but it's more nostalgic than anything, just because I grew up hearing those songs, and it's cool to hear them. So, anyway, yeah, Steve Miller Band, Fly Like an Eagle. <laughs> All right, um, looks like I'm going to have to start wrapping up here because it's getting to my 10-minute point. But um, I'm going to make uh, one more of these videos, and then I'll be done for the night. All right, thanks for watching, guys.